Hello guys, welcome to Sarushi classes. So today we are going to learn NCIT class 6 history chapter 5 that is what books and variables tells us. So in this chapter we are going to learn about Vedas and so many books and manuscripts and variables we have found and with this we came to know about history. So there are different books. The, these are in our Indian society. The oldest books were Rig Veda. Basically, there were four Vedas that is Rig Veda, Sam Veda, Yajur Veda, and Athar Veda that gives us idea about history. The first is Rig Veda, which is the oldest one, which consists of 1000 hymns uh, and Chuktas, which means well said. These were uh, done by Rishis and three gods in the old Vedic Sanskrit and it will it was consist with dialogues so these three gods were Agni which is a god of fire and Indra which is a warrior god and the Soma which is a plant from which a drink is made then the next Veda is Sama Veda in which musical notes and chanting are there and the Yajur Veda in Yajur Veda there are rituals and sacrifices were given what type of rituals and what type of sacrifices that were done during that time were written in the Yajur Veda. Then the last is Atharva Veda where the spells and charms were mentioned. Then the division or uh, parts of Veda. So these Vedas are divided into different parts These that are Sahita, then Brahmins, then Aranyakas and Upanishads. So these Samhitas are nothing but collection of mantras these brahmins were nothing but the rituals and aranyaka the name itself indicates aranyaka aranya means uh, forest or jungles and it gives the it gives the idea about theology and the meditation then the upanishads which are nothing but the books where philosophy and the concluding parts of the way parts were given the, or the Vedanta was given as the name itself indicates Vedanta. Ved means Ved and Anta means the end. So the end of Vedas that is the concluding part. Then the next is what are what are the origins of the languages? So uh, basically languages are from different families. For example, Sanskrit is from Indo-European families. So uh, there were five Indian languages which were originated from Indo-European family and that were Assamese, Gujarati, Hindi, Kashmiri, Sindhi and Europe and there are six European languages which were originated from these family that are French, German, Spanish, Greek, Italian, English. So basically what was that these these languages like Indian languages and the European language are somewhat there were some kind of similarities in the languages as they are they are belonging to same family that is Indo-European family where you will find some some word like matra which is in Sanskrit and mother in English and ma in Hindi are somewhat similar. Then the next is South Indian languages. These are of Dravid origin whereas there are four languages which are which comes under this category that are Tamil, Telugu, Kannad and Malayalam. Then some of the northeastern languages are of indo tibetan origin and some other languages like Jharkhand and from geographical area from Jharkhand and Central India these were of Austro-Asiatic origin. So, so with this we have come to an end with this uh, topic that is origin of language so next topic is people so what kind of people were they how these people were divided basically uh, brahmins were the priests and the rajas these rajas are different from the rajas we know today uh, like these rajas were not rulers but these rajas were perform were allowed to perform rituals and there were no capital cities and they were not living in palaces or there were no armies or no tax collection was there and the son not succeeds the father so these rajas were different and these brahmins were also different uh, the the four varna system that is brahmin kshatriya vaishya and shudra were come later 
so uh, oh, those, those uh, varna system we are going to uh, learn in upcoming chapters so the here jana that is wish or vaisha were the people kuru jana or bharata jana or yaju jana are some of the examples of these people then the arya arya are nothing but the persons who composed hymns and they used to call themselves as aryans and the persons who don't uh, did not didn't compose the hymns that is oppose, opponents of the aryans were called as dasas or dasu but in later period the women or the men who were uh, who were captured by someone or who were owned by someone they were the pro- they became the property of someone and they used to uh, work as a slaves so these slaves were different from these dasas these dasas and dasus were the opponent of aryans but in in the due course they became the dasis and dasas so the next chapter uh, the next topic is stone building so there were type of stone buildings found uh, these were megaliths mega itself indicates mega means big and liths or lithos means stones so the big stone to mark the burial sites the, here you, you can see here there were big stones used to mark the burial sites uh, at the deccan north east kashmir and uh, surf uh, where the surface or uh, where underground and these were known as cis and along with this these bodies were buried in the pots and black and red ware tools weapons and ornaments were also found with these bodies so here uh, we'll talk about inamga it's another site a uh, site where on the, it is uh, located on the river of god uh, a uh, god river is uh, nothing but a tributary of bhima river which is near pune and where you we found adult burries in the ground with the head in the north direction with vessels of the food and waters and the man buried in clay jar in courtyard of house in cross lake position was found in china also writings on the animal bones were found uh, they these bones were called as oracle oracle bones and these bones basically you know they used to fire these bones and when these bones get get cracked and by studying these cracked bones these peoples these people you you know try to predict the futures we, you can see that it is some what kind of superstitious practices uh, this time those people were following so basically kings in palaces and bronze vessels and these kings in palaces were used to you know these priests used to see the future and they used to kings wanted to know whether they are going to you know uh, what we can say they are going to win the war or they are about to fought the war or what will be the um, environmental conditions or climatic conditions or what about the monsoons or whether they are going to you know uh, have a son or a girl child or things like that they used to you know uh, know uh, by these predictions which were somewhat superstitious let us discuss a story of uh, let us discuss the story of the vishwamitra uh, here is the story is uh, you know uh, vishwamitra was a sage and uh, who 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 says to rivers that all rivers come down from come down from the mountains like come down from the mountains like wait for a second i'll show you it Just wait for a second. I will show it here. Here you will see. So here, uh, this Vishwamitra says uh, to the river that all rivers come down from the mountains like two swift horses, like two shining cows, and lead their cows. You move like chariots to the sea through the power of Indra. You are full of water and wish to unite with one another. The river says, "We who are full of water move along the path." the gods have made for us once we start following we cannot be stopped so why you are why do you pray to us 
O sage. So, Vishwa Mitra says, O sisters, please listen to me. The singer who has come from a distance with his chariots and cars, let your water not rise above our axles so that we can cross safely. Then the river says, we will listen to your prayer so that you can cross safely. And the historian points pointed out that these hymns was composed in the areas where these rivers flow. These also suggest that the sages lived in the society where horses and cows were valued animals. That is why the rivers are composed to the horses and the cows. So this, these, these are some of the hymns which were there in which were there mentioned in the Rug Veda. So with this we have come to an end of this chapter. Thank you for listening and if you like this video and find a purpose behind watching it, please, please, please do like this video, share and subscribe and spread the knowledge. Thank you.